Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the Blue Ox base plate on a 2021 Subaru Crosstrek. Now there are five required components when flat towing a vehicle. And the first one starting on the vehicle side is going to be the base plate. And the base plate attaches to the frame of the vehicle and that's gonna allow for all your connection points for your other components. Now going along with that, you see our tow bar here is actually attached to that base plate and that's gonna make that connection between the vehicle and the RV. Next, you have your safety chains, and that's gonna to attach to the loops on your base plate and also to the side of the camper. That way, if they do become disconnected for whatever reason, these chains are gonna hold this in place. Next, you have your braking system. Your braking system will allow the vehicle to slow and stop as you put those brakes on on the RV. Also included with that is gonna be this breakaway switch. So if all your components fail, this is gonna pull this cable, putting the brakes on the vehicle and bringing it to a stop so it's not rolling down the highway. <laughs> Next you have your diode wiring and your diode wiring is gonna send the turn signals and brake lights and running lights from your RV to your vehicle. And this is all done based on this umbilical cord, which is gonna attach your six pole here that we have on our vehicle to the seven pole on the camper. So this is what our base plate looks like when it's installed and hooked up. You're gonna see it has these removable arms. They're really easy to just put in place, click, and you'll hear, hear that audible click knowing that this will be engaged. To disengage, very easy. You're gonna just pull that pin, twist it, and it will come out. Now next, you'll see we have our attachment here for our safety chain loop. So that's gonna make it nice and easy to hook up your safety chains, and it's gonna be sticking out just enough to where you're not gonna to have to worry about making contact with your fascia. It also has the mounting point for your breakaway switch, so that's gonna put it in a nice position. You also have your mounting point for your six pole. You also have your other safety chain loop here, as well as your other arm. The base plate is the main connection point for your vehicle to the tow bar, which allows you to be towed by your RV. The base plate does have a nice black powder coat finish, and really, when it's not hooked up, it is pretty hidden in the grill of the Subaru, so it's not too unsightly. That way, when you're not flat towing, it doesn't look too utilitarian. And also, it's nice because when you do hook up, everything is right there where you need it to be and easily accessible. Now, as far as the installation of the base plate, it's not terribly hard to do. You are gonna have to remove your front fascia, which can be a little bit uh, overwhelming at first, at first glance, but also I'm gonna walk you through each step and we'll make sure we get through it. You are also gonna have to trim a little bit of some metal just to kind of get that to align with your frame rails. But again, I'll be here. So let's take a look and let's get this base plate installed. To begin our installation, we're gonna need to take off the front fascia. And the first thing we're gonna wanna do is pop the hood. And right here where the front fascia kind of sits here on uh, our uh, radiator support, you're gonna see that there's gonna be some 10 millimeters. There should be six total. So we'll go ahead and get those removed. Now, since this is the first step, I'm gonna suggest that keep all your hardware in a safe place. That way it's nice and organized. It's gonna make everything going back on a lot easier. So make sure you have these maybe in a cup or I use a muffin tin to just kind of store all these. We also have these plastic push pins and you can see that there's two of them there. And these are pretty easy to get a flathead screwdriver under or I have a, a trim plate a removal tool here. And that way you can kind of just pry this up and this pin should pull up and the whole thing will come out. Go ahead and get this one as well. So now you're gonna to go to your wheel well and it doesn't matter what side you start with here. I'm on my driver though. And you can see there's a center portion and what you're gonna do for that is just kind of push in on the center and that should help kind of get this plastic portion on the outside to kind of raise up and then we'll be able to get this where we can pull it out. Now you might have to kind of work at it for a second here. And these plastic pins can get a little tricky. Um, and if we have to, I might have to push it from the back end here, but there we go with that pushed in. There's a nice audible snap. There we go. That just kind of comes out here. Now you're gonna have one on each side, so go ahead and get the other one on the other wheel well off. So now under the front 
fascia here, we're gonna go ahead and remove some plastic push pins. So starting here behind this little mini mud flap here, our little air dam I should say. We'll go ahead and get this one. Moving forward, kind of underneath our fog lamp, we'll get this one. And this one's kind of tucked up a little bit. So we'll get this guy. We'll get this one as well. And then you're gonna see these, these actually have a slot in them. So taking a flathead screwdriver, you should be able to kind of slowly work these back. And these can be a little bit tricky. To try to hold on to that center plastic there, or the outside ring there, so you can get the rotation. And that should come out pretty easy. Moving along. So pretty much you're just following this edge, and when there's plastic push pins, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and get those out. So now we're getting ready to take our fascia off, but before we do that, I like to put a little bit of painter's tape here along these edges. And the reason being is when we go to put this back on, sometimes aligning this can get tricky and you have paint rubbing against paint. And so sometimes it can scratch or chip off. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of throw a little bit of tape along this line and that's just gonna give it that little extra protection to keep scratches off of our vehicle. I just try to get it close to the actual line where they meet up. And then once you get that set, just kind of work that tape down just to where it's sitting right on that edge. And I just kind of take my fingernail and run it in to the gap just a little bit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the top edge as well, just for that added protection. So now we're gonna pull off our front fascia. And this is a step you're gonna to want to grab an extra set of hands as this can kind of get bulky. You don't wanna be dropping your bumper. You also wanna have something set up in order to have your bumper rest on. And that way it's not gonna fall over while you're installing your base plate. Now, I will say I have a suspicion that we're gonna be needing to unplug these fog lamps. So as we pull this off, we're not gonna just kind of yank it back. We're gonna look for those electrical connections and unplug those when we get to them. So to get your front fascia off, you're gonna to wanna to start at the sides and kind of work your way towards the middle. So just kind of peeling back here and working your way as you go along. And there's gonna be a lot of clips here. Sometimes they can give you a little bit of resistance, but just kind of work it through one at a time. And just like that, this should come out. Now you can see here, these are our fog lamps that we talked about. So just push that clip in and they should come out pretty easy. And then now we can set our fascia aside. So we've actually used the box that our base plate came in, kind of opened it up and it works well as a platform for this to sit on. So now we're gonna see these bolts back here. And what we're gonna be doing is removing this bumper. Now, you're gonna see two up top, and these are gonna be 12 millimeters. There's also gonna be two right here. And then we're gonna need a 10 millimeter to remove this section here. It kinda goes onto this plastic, so it's on the other side of the foam. And then once we get these off, we'll be repeating on the other side. Now. You can see it does have a tab here that kind of holds it in place. So I'm gonna leave one of these still kind of threaded on just for added security, but the bumper support shouldn't fall down all the way, but just be careful. So now with our hardware removed, we're gonna go ahead and take this bumper support off. And there are tabs, so you might have to just slide it up, kind of move it around a little bit to get those tabs to unhinge. And now we can actually set this aside. We will not be reinstalling this as our base plate's gonna kind of replace the support here of our bumper. So you can hold on to this if you ever wanna return your vehicle back to stock, or for now, just set it aside. So now we're gonna pull down the belly pan here, and you're gonna see that there is a 10 millimeter bolt there, we're going to be removing that. And then there's also a plastic push pin on the side. So just kind of follow it back. You can see right here you have your uh, tow hook. But right here, right behind it, you're going to have that plastic push pin. So we can go ahead and remove that. And then we're going to be repeating the same process on the other side of the vehicle. 
So now we're going to be removing our windshield washer fluid reservoir. And the first step you're going to want to do is it's actually mounted here on our radiator support. So there's a Phillips, kind of a large button here. We'll go ahead and get this off. And this is going to be kind of one of those plastic pins. So hold that outer ring kind of with, you know, just your finger to just kind of get that gap. And a lot of times from there you can grab your hands, continue to unscrew this out. And we should be able to get our trim panel tool and get this out. So now there's going to be three 10 millimeter bolts to get the rest of this out. We're also going to want to unplug all of our electrical connections as we're going to be pulling this out. So let's go ahead and do that now. So just pushing in here. These should come out pretty easy. And I'm also going to note, you can see this one has a blue cap. This one has brown. Um, just that way they're not getting flip flopped and they're going back in the right spot. So now that we have these separated, we can also go ahead and get this clip. You can kind of just push in on each side. Might use a little screwdriver to help kind of persuade that in. And then once those tabs are pushed in, we should be able to get this pushed through and get our wiring loose, just like that. So now, you can see this one here we'll be getting with a 10 millimeter. There's also one down here that's a 10 millimeter, or you can use your Phillips head screwdriver. The other one is actually kind of hard to see. It's gonna be tucked back here pretty far. So I think what I'll end up doing is there's a plastic push pin that holds this uh, fender liner on. I'm gonna just take that so we can kind of pry it back a little bit more and gain access to that. We're going to take our fluid lines here and just kind of get these undone from the reservoir. And now we're going to be able to take this out. This part on the neck, this can't actually separate, but let's see if we can't get this out one go. So now we actually have this all taken out. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, you could just pinch these lines off. Um, I'm gonna just kind of leave it attached and set it aside for now, uh, as this is gaining us quite a bit of access here, just like we need. Now on our passenger side, you're gonna see this air duct that feeds into our air box. We're gonna go ahead and you'll see these little screws here. Just kind of unscrew them lightly, just like some of the others we've done. And these should come out. With those two plastic push pins taken out, we can go ahead and remove our little air duct here. And just kind of wiggling it back and forth, you'll get it to kind of unhinge from the air box. Now set this aside, we will be reinstalling this later. So now we're going to be popping open our air filter housing just by taking these two clips and popping those back. And this is gonna start separating that. Um, but in order to get this box off, we're gonna need to remove these 10 millimeter bolts here. So let's go ahead and get those out. If you look underneath where the hood prop is, there's also gonna be a 10 millimeter nut here that we're gonna to need to take off in order to get our air box out of the way. So now we have our air box actually loosened up. We can go ahead, let's take our air filter out and we'll set that aside somewhere safe. So now we'll be pulling that portion of the air box that we just removed the hardware from. There's also gonna be this tank that is attached to it as well. So just peeling back the other portion, you'll be able to work this through and then set this aside as well. So now we're going to take a 12 millimeter socket here and get our horn loose.
So now we're gonna go ahead, there's gonna be these two 14 millimeter bolts and these two 14 millimeter nuts. So we'll go ahead and get those removed. Lift this up over that tab and these should slide out. And then we're gonna repeat the same process on the other side. So now our underbody panel, we're gonna to want to be able to drop this down a little bit. And that's gonna be accomplished by taking this 12 millimeter bolt off on the driver's side. Now there's also going to be a plastic push pin in the center and then another bolt identical to this one that we just removed. So let's get these down and that's gonna allow this panel to kind of drop down a little bit. It's still gonna be hanging um, because there's the rear bolts attached, but this will gain us a little bit more access. Next, we're gonna be removing these little foam pieces and they're just kind of stuck on there with some adhesive. So you can kind of peel these off. And then this section here, since that's plugged in, you can unplug it or you can simply just kind of tear that off as we will not be reinstalling these. So now for this section, you're gonna to want to grab some safety glasses as we're gonna be doing a little bit of cutting on the metal. And you can see I've used painter's tape to just kind of mark off the template that I'll be cutting. And the reason being is the base plate itself will mount to where the bumper holes uh, attached to the actual bumper impact bar, but also you can see we're going to be mounting back here and we need to notch this out as it's going to sit flush with the actual frame rail. So using a sawzall here, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of zip through these. Uh, if you have an angle grinder, really any reciprocating saw or a rotary tool that you can cut through metal, whatever works best for you. But I suggest kind of marking it out that way you have a template to work with. And again, we're going to try to make this as flush with this frame rail as possible. Now when I was cutting, this was kind of moving back and forth uh, and we are gonna have to cut through here cleanly. And as this is moving, it kind of makes for a little, not as easy cutting. Um, so, so to get that clean line, I've gone ahead and I've just taken a C-clamp here and attached where the two metals are kind of up top, still away from where we're cutting, but that should hold it in place a little bit more as we are sawing through there. So once you kind of get your cuts in place, it might be easier to just kind of Move this back and forth to get that little bit of excess taken off. And we're pretty close here, so I'm gonna just go back and kind of polish these up to where they're a little more flush and clean up our edges with a file. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side. So now that we do have some raw exposed metal, I'm just gonna go back with a little bit of clear spray paint and just kind of spray those rough edges or those raw edges and that way they're a little more protected and over time it's not gonna cause rust or corrosion or oxidation. Now at this point, we should be able to get our base plate at least in place. And so what we're gonna do here, this is gonna go where our bumper impact bar was. And then the longer arms here on the side are gonna slide in where we made those notches. So let's try to get this in place here. So make sure both sides are actually through those cut areas. And you may have to kind of move some of the plastics here in the front just to kind of get this to slide in. Now this is gonna be kind of a tight pinch here. Even though I've kind of, you know, sanded that down to where it's flush, it does kind of wedge in here. And ironically enough, we're actually gonna be putting a wedge to kind of counteract that space between the frame rail. So if this is kind of giving you a little bit of issue, maybe a dead blow or a uh, soft rubber mallet, should be able to get this in place. I'm kind of just using my hips here and I should be able to kind of chip that in like that. Okay. Now it is going to get a little bit tricky. You're going to have your wedge and that's going to sit here in between where we're actually pinching in the frame rail. So I highly suggest getting that in place first. And you can actually see the way that the wedge is sitting. It's flat on the actual frame rail. And you're going to have the narrow side towards the front and the wider side towards the back. And so what we're doing here, just so it doesn't move and we have to adjust it, I'm just taking our bolt, putting it in place on one of them 
and that way it's not going to slide around too much and that way i still have a window to kind of look and see when we're lined up now it is going to be pretty tight fit so we're using a dead blow to kind of knock that into place in order to get these bolted in So once you get this one side in place, you're gonna to wanna to hand thread these in. You don't have to tighten them down because we're gonna go back and actually put thread lock on them. But those are gonna hold this in place while we get these mounted up. But let's go ahead and repeat that same process on the other side. So now we're going to be mounting our hardware into the holes here where our bumper support was. And we'll be using this hardware. Uh, you'll see that we have a split washer here as well as a flat washer. We're also gonna use a little bit of red Loctite uh, to get these to make sure that they kind of stay in place for a long time. Now we're using red Loctite as this is going to be pretty high strength. So once this is in, it's pretty well going to stay there for, well, hopefully its entirety. So to get these holes to line up, we may have to use a pry bar to kind of just adjust a little bit. Um, but I think once we get one or two in place, it's going to be a lot easier. So first I'm going to kind of just see if I can't get these to align up with our holes. And I do think these two should be pretty good. So I'll go ahead and I'm gonna get my Loctite. And I'm just gonna kind of cover first couple threads here. You don't have to get too heavy on this. And it'll kind of space out as you tighten it through. I probably went a little heavy there. But let's go ahead and I'm gonna hand tighten these down first. And then once we have them all in place, we're gonna need to take a torque wrench and get these torqued down. And these aren't quite lining up, so Again, I'm gonna take, uh, I'm gonna just take my rubber mallet here and kind of give it a little bit of extra room there. It's gonna get a little bit easier as we get each of them in as they're gonna line up a little bit better. So I've got these all kind of hand tightened uh, and started a little bit. So I'm gonna actually go back with my torque wrench here and tighten these down. Now you're gonna wanna check your uh, instruction manual and that's going to give you the specifics as far as your torque specifications. Uh, using torque wrench is going to make sure that it's not going to have too much stress on the weld nuts or the actual bolt itself. It's also going to make sure it's tight enough to not actually work itself out. So uh, make sure you have a torque wrench and if you don't have one we have these here available at e-trailer or generally you can rent one at an auto parts store. So let's go through and we'll torque these down to the proper spec. Now you might want to take Maybe a power tool to get these a little bit closer. Um, but the torque setting is relatively low, so really make sure you don't crank them down too terribly tight as you want to actually have these to the proper setting. There we go. So let's go ahead. We're going to do the same to all three of these, and then we're going to repeat the same process on the other side of the vehicle. Now that we have all this hardware tightened and torqued down, we're actually going to take these larger back ones that went through our wedge out and then we're going to put some Loctite on here as well before getting these tightened down. Once we have those thread locked and tightened into place, we're going to go back with our torque wrench and get those down to the proper spec in our instruction manual. We're then going to repeat the same process on the other side of the vehicle. So now we're gonna be putting our hardware, this bolt here, through the hole, uh, and we're gonna be attaching it to this weld nut on this uh, beam that we have here. And in order to get that in place, it's gonna be sliding through the front as there is an access hole here. So to get it in place, it's gonna be kind of tricky. So we're gonna feed it and try to get this in. You may have to go from a different angle. Try it from down here. And it's close, we may try to get it straight on here. You may have to bend the wire to get kind of the approach angle that you need. So it kind of helped to get it actually, this uh, little, the stick that's attached to it kind of parallel. And then we're gonna kind of look for it over here. Now you're gonna see the holes are not perfectly lined up here. So it's possible we may have to drill this out a little bit to enlarge it just to get this to feed through. Now this one seems decent enough. I was able to kind of hand thread it through. So we'll see if we can make that work. Let's get this in place to where we can see our 
backing plate. You can, yep, there we go. So you can kind of see that lined up right there. And I'm going to just kind of slowly hand thread our bolt in and see if I can't get these to attach. So make sure you are attached to that weld nut in there or that um, weld nut on that little arm that we just fed in. Now we have these blocks here and I'm going to take this little slotted end here and we're going to wrap this around our bolt and that's going to wedge in there pretty tight. So once we tighten this down, that's going to close this gap up, making sure that everything's cinched up well. So now that we have this in place, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down. Now with that tightened down, we're going to go ahead and do it on the other side. As you can see our holes are really not lined up too well on this side. So I am going to go with a drill bit and just kind of route it through that hole, enlarging it. That way we have a straight shot for our bolt to feed through. Now with these, make sure you are putting your lock tight on those and make sure that this plate is in place. And once you tighten it down, this shouldn't move as it cinches it up. And now we need to go back with our torque wrench and make sure it's at the proper torque setting. There we go. And you're gonna have this excess little wire here. So you can actually go ahead with some snips and just cut those. Or sometimes if you kind of wobble it back and forth, you can get it to break. Um, but I'm just gonna trim that and then feed the excess kind of back in the hole so it's not in the way of catching on things. So now we're gonna take our bolt here, which is gonna be our quarter inch and a flat washer. We're gonna be feeding it through this. Now I'm gonna lift this plastic up so it seats over. And we'll just feed that through. And then I'm gonna follow it up with another flat washer. And then we're gonna put a nylon nut. I'm just gonna get this hand threaded on there so it holds it in place. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side and then come back and tighten this down. Using an 11 millimeter socket and an 11 millimeter wrench, we'll go ahead and tighten these down. Just make sure it's snug and go ahead and do the other as well. So now we're going to need to attach our cables and this is just going to prevent uh, if this was to ever detach from the vehicle, it's just going to hold it on by going around the actual frame. So the way we're going to route this, we're going to try to go over right here and you're going to want to make sure that you're not binding or rubbing against anything that's important. So trying to find a nice open space to route this. Let's see up top where we're at. I'm going to make sure that I'm avoiding any of our hard lines so we're not putting pressure on those. And I can kind of just feed this back and then we can go to this same side here. We'll be able to loop this through and then feed our cables on. And then from here, I'm just going to tighten this up. So now with these cables in place, really we're ready to go ahead, get our washer fluid bottle back um, and, and really get everything back together. But if you are doing a flat toe setup, a lot of the wiring is gonna be running up here and it's a lot easier when you have the fascia actually taken off to be able to route those wires. So if you are doing a full flat toe setup, I highly suggest keeping that front fascia off until you're completed. So we're gonna be mocking up our front fascia and that way we know where to trim for our base plate arms to come through and also make sure that all of our other accessories are gonna be able to pop out of this. But we also wanna make sure that we're not trimming more than we need to. So let's kinda of get this in place with an extra set of hands and just lightly kind of mock it up to the factory mounting points. And as we can see, it's kind of already catching a little bit on the bottom here, so we may need to kind of help feed it in just to make sure it's all aligned properly. 
So we can see this kind of lined up here. It does look like once the bumper is set flat, our safety chain loops are going to be great. And I do believe our six pole adapter uh, plate here is going to be fine. Now this is where we're going to have to trim. Our arms are going to have to go through here. So this section here looks to be like where we're going to be trimming. Same with the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll make a little bit of cuts here and see how it mocks up. Also looking here where we're, our plug's going to sit. I think these arms are going to sit just fine and we'll be able to mount it, but the plug is going to sit in this area, so we're also going to notch this off as well. So the way that I'm going to trim this, I'm just going to be using some snips here as it'll go through the plastic pretty well. So first off, I'm going to start here where our plug's going to live and just kind of get it as close to that edge as possible. Same with the top, and this one kind of sits at an angle. So let's cut a little more. So I used a pair of dikes to kind of get a nice closer bite onto this plastic and try to keep it to where we're not chunking into the rest of this line. And we'll just even it out, going back with a file here. Now where our base plate arms are gonna go, I've trimmed a little bit inside of this just to give it a little more structural rigidity. You can see there's this flashing here that's gonna kind of hold this a little more. So that way these stay pretty strong and firm. But uh, I just kind of cut these again with my dikes and trying to make them nice and even. We'll go back with our file here and just get that nice smooth edge. Now we're gonna get this in place. We're gonna want to actually feed some of our wires through. Um, as far as like we have our breakaway switch here, make sure that you have this kind of routed through where that bracket is. It's gonna make it a little bit easier for mounting purposes. And I've just kind of routed my other wires here where we're going to mount our plug. So from here, just simply kind of the opposite way. We took our fascia off, get the metal middle part set first. These should kind of line up here. And then from there, we'll just kind of work our way by the headlight. These should kind of pop in. You may have to work it a little bit. And then here, I'm going to pull my liner back just a hair. Something else you want to keep in mind when putting your fascia back on is you do have your fog lamps, so make sure you get those plugged in. And if your vehicle doesn't have them, no worries, but you don't want to have to go back and try to plug those in after this is on. So now with our fascia installed, I've gone ahead and I put our electrical components into our plug and mounted that, as well as our breakaway switch. So just make sure that you have all your underbodies pinned up, your air filter and its plastic that goes with it all put back together, your horn attached, and your fog lamps, and you should be ready to rock. And that was a look and installation of the Blue Ox base plate on a 2021 Subaru Crosstrek. Thanks for watching.